welcome to Red and Black TV. I'm your host, Stars, co-host, Banana, Panel Heads, Azza, and Boz. Uh, tonight we have our pre-Derby uh, episode, and uh, we've got a special guest tonight, Western Sydney Wanderers, Stephen Yugakovic. How are you, brother? Good, good, good boy. How are you? Not bad, not bad. Jeez. Buzzing, not bro. bad. It's good to have you. See you. No, nah, thank you. Thanks for having me. It's good to come on and speak to you boys. I know how passionate um, you all are, so looking forward to it. Absolutely. Um, so let's get the ball rolling. So the first question I have for you, man, is how do you feel finally coming back to represent uh, a club, you know, that you've, um, you know, like it's your hometown where you've grown up pretty much? Yeah, um, I've said to a few people, like, it's it's an unreal experience because, Growing up, when the club was formed, I was always at their their training sessions and things like that, and not getting opportunity to to represent the area and having to go overseas was tough. But finally coming back, it's um it was the right time. Um, it's always been in in my vision um, to come play for the club and to get that opportunity finally um, was is good, and I'm I'm loving every minute of it. Absolutely. So, so, Stephen, just on that, I, I know you, you played it as a youngster. You played at United. You moved to Coney, I think. And then um, you went overseas, a few seasons over in Croatia. Where were you at in your career when Wanderers hit that height of winning the ACL, exactly? And did you hear I, about us? So, I went overseas. I was about 16, 17. Okay. So, I was in Croatia when um, when all that happened. So, I was I would still follow the A-League, not as much. Um but when I was over there, it was it was pretty big, even because Popper being the coach, being a Croatian, um, yeah. it was it was pretty big. I remember it was on. I remember watching the final in a, in a ca- in a cafe, um, yeah. just with the boys, just because purely because Popper had that Croatian connection. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, like I said, even in Croatia, it was a massive thing, and and I think a lot of people in Croatia just followed the Wanderers from that. Um, so that that that's where I was, and that's why I remember it happening. So that's. That's my experience of it, and I remember just watching it and saying, oh, fuck, this is unreal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there was a few Crow boys in the team as well. Poliak was yep. there. And, um, yeah, yeah. Was in there. That's good. That's good. Now, um, Stoss, you, go, you can go. Yeah. Um, obviously, the main question I wanted to ask was, obviously, um, how have the boys settled in with the transition, obviously, from, you know, of Carl Robinson's departure and then Mark Rudin coming in? How's the dressing room at the moment? Like, you know, is like are the boys, you know, got that um, mutual respect for Rudin coming in? You know, was it a big transition? Um, it was it was a different experience for everyone, if, it's, if I'm going to put it that way. Um, when a new coach comes in in football, it's like a – it's like a tidal wave hits, um, and it's how people react from there. So some people react differently, some t- people react um, poorly. Um, but from what from what I've seen and what I can say for everyone, it's been a it's been a good um, good change. There's been a he's a quite quite big man. He's a he's a figure. He's a lot of authority behind him. So I think that's been a bit of a change from how Carl worked, and it's a lot of boys have reacted to it well. Um, so that's what I, I think the main thing is. Um, the reaction from the boys has been good. Obviously, when a new coach comes in, he has different opinions and about players and positions and things like that. So sometimes that's hard to, to take, um, and you've got to try adapt to the new coach and do what he wants and and go from there. But I think the main main thing is it's it's been a big positive change. Just Absolutely. on that, Stephen. Now, when a coach comes in, a new gaffer comes in. Is there priority to obviously turn the ship around? Is there priority to lift the, the confidence of the players or is it changing the system? What, what is, what's the main priority of a coach coming in? So, so I've been through a few coaches even in overseas and from what I've seen, the first thing they do is their key messages, um, whether it's they want to play this style and these are the steps to get you there. Um, yeah. You have to put that first. So whether it's... Uh, for example, we want to be a high-pressing team. We've got to work on that in training, whether that's tactically and physically. Um, obviously, it's a bit harder now to work on stuff physically because we're already how far into the season. So then we look at, all right, tactically, we want to do this, and we all have to buy in. So that's that's the main thing. It's getting what he wants to do and the messages across and how we do it. Yeah. 
What about Van Egmont? Like, how is it with him being in the pub? Because obviously he's got the A-League experience, he's done it. Does he play a big part? Or is he more like just behind the scenes sort of thing? No, he does. He um he he runs a like they do we when coaches come in, um Rudin was a defender, so he tends to focus on the defensive side of things. Um Gary has been around um with a lot of experience and he's he's mm. great to work with he technically technically, tactically, one on one. Um so he does a lot of the one on one stuff and, and things like that. So he's been excellent coming in and bringing that experience and like winning the A-League when he did. Um, so he he knows how the A-League works and obviously being with national teams and uh, an experienced head to have around. So he's been he's been um, quite influential. you saying that, like I've noticed the transition now in just the playing style, obviously. So you're touching on Ben Engman and focusing more on the attacking technical side of things. It seems like when you boys, um, you know, get possession and you're moving forward, um, even in attack, you know, final third, he's looking a lot more dangerous now in comparison to the Robinson era. Yeah, there's, um, I think a lot of a big message was like run forward. Um, in the last few games, even myself, I find myself running forward. I haven't done that in a while. Um, it's a bit of a change, but it's a good change. It's a welcome change that we all need to get back to doing. Because um, end of the day, you got to score goals, and to score goals, you got to go forward, um, break lines, and with forward runs, and you need willing runners. So that was a big message as well. Just on that, Stephen, was uh, Carl's, from what we've seen, was Carl's main focus ball retention? Um, yeah, possession, not not over the top, but I think every coach um, does enjoy possession. Yep. So I think that's not to say it was his main focus, but it was an influence that he tried to push, yeah. Um, but, yeah, like I said, every coach is different and, Yep. Different formations bring different kind of possessions and things like that. So there's a lot more into it um, with systems and, and stuff like that as well. Sure. sure. Just um, just touching on Robson, like because you played with him at Newcastle when he was there, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, like what happened there? Like, you, when you were playing in Newcastle over there under him, you just played a different brand. So like, what was the difference when you came to Wonders when he brought you? Like, was there any like I don't know like. For us, like when he when he first came to the club, everyone was excited. He's going to bring some style to the club. Like you bring the Newcastle, so what's he going to do with the Wanderers? When you came to the club, was there did you notice something different with the tactics that you were like, hang on, but this is not going to work? Because that's quite the vibe we got off the players. Like shit just wasn't working, man. Yeah, uh, one main thing I noticed was when he came to Newcastle, we were dead last. So like, yeah, we we sort of really had nothing to lose. Um, and that for me was a big thing. I remember playing, and it was there was no pressure. Um, we went out and just just played um, to that system, and it was a similar system. Um, things were tweaked, obviously here when I played because personnel and players like that. So I think a lot of it came down to just I don't know, just the playing group and and being able to take on the messages and, and things like that. So I it was not to pinpoint things, but it was a completely different scenario. Um, if that makes sense, like when you work as well, like I'm sure you're there. Goals when there's a bit of pressure, um, it's a bit harder, if that makes sense. Like that that does affect players and coaches and clubs. So I think that was when he did come to Newcastle, um, like I said, we were we were dead last and the only way was up, sort of thing. Mm. Makes sense, yeah. 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 Question is, oh, sorry, so there's been um I don't know, there's been like I don't know if it affects you guys, but there's been a lot of change in like the background, you know, the office, JT, all that sort of stuff. Does that affect the playing squad or not really? Like, do you guys talk about that, or you just get down to business playing football? No, not not really. Um, like obviously everything that happened the other week and stuff like that, we we don't really harp on about it. It's it's happened. It's not, that's not our job. Our job's on the field. Um, we're gonna we're playing for the club, and at the end of the day, the backroom staff are there to help us and assist us. So we need to help them as much as we can and, and just play um yeah. so we know how hard everyone does work for us so it really it's up to us and no we don't really harp on about it too much it's it is what it is and we're, and that, that's it really yeah fair enough and it should be that way Stephen. you know what i mean i think yeah that, see it. that it's, it's up to us to to play they're there to to run the club and and help us in any way possible and and if it's a winning club everyone's happy it makes life that much that's easier good. for everyone not just the players, the fans, families of the players, of families of people that work at the club, everyone. Hmm. Uh, what are your thoughts on um, some of these players that obviously Rudin has been promoting, some of these youth players, uh, more specifically uh, Chancha? 
Uh, you know, felt like Crow, obviously. Uh, he's had some <laughs> solid games the past few games. What are your thoughts? Uh, I, I like Phil. Uh, not just because he's a Croatian boy. Just he um he works hard. He he um he listens as well. That's what I like about young players when you tell them a message or you give them a bit of a harsh word, they take it on board. They don't go into their shell and complain. They they take it on board. And he's waited a long time for his opportunity. Um, and to see him in that first game step up and play the way he did, he was nervous. I can tell you that he was he was shitting himself. Yeah. But it didn't look like on the field. So he went out there and he played well. So no, I like Phil the way he plays. He's got a long way to go, um, but he just needs to keep his head screwed on and keep pushing because he's, he's played excellent, I think. Oh, he's a good boy. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Moving to the derby, Stoss. Yeah, let's move into the derby, obviously. Um, uh, well, what are your thoughts? Because obviously, I'm sure you know, Stephen, like, this is probably one of the most important fixtures as a Wanderers supporter. You know, the derby's massive, you know. Um, obviously, form out the window. It's always out the window. Um, how how are the boys in training right now leading up to it? Um, like, is the confidence there? You know, because obviously, you know, our you know last five games under Rudin could have gone a bit better. You know, obviously, you have jagged a few points um, in that time. But, you know, going to the derby, it's, it's very important, you know, to get the three points against our biggest rivals. So how's everyone feeling at the moment? Yeah, I think if you look at the games, there's been periods of games where we've played some of our best football and then there's periods where we can't score and then it comes back to bite us. But like said, this week is, is massive. I think the build-up has been uh, been excellent. Like we trained today, everyone was straight away from the warm-up, ready to go, even the whole week. Um, it's there's a, there's a bit of a tension in the air where we know we have to perform. Um, of course, form goes out the window and all that stuff. It's a derby. Like, fuck, we want to go out there and win. That's the main thing. There's no other, for, for me as well, there's no other option. Like, you've got to go out there to win. You're not playing for a draw. You're not playing for anything else but a win. So I think a lot of the boys have bought into that this week. Intensity has been good. Um, and, like, I don't know what else to say. The derby's a derby. You've got to go out there and win. This is, your, this is the first one in A League, apart from like the uh, what do you call the Mariners one, but like, like a proper. <laughs> you don't count that, bro. <laughs> it's a city derby, you know. Derby. I had, I had the first one, first game yeah, of the season. That, you know, that, one. Yeah. that um that was unreal. Like just I remember goosebumps walking walking out. Like that was uh that was next level. And then this one, yeah, being at the the stage of the season where both teams need points. Um, it's a massive game. Like you can look at the table, um, the whole season. So that's what I mean. I think this one's going to be the biggest one yet for us. Funny well, if you look at if A League, you can win Jag three games or two games, and you're right back in it. You know. So let's hope <laughs> this week three points, by that rain, hail or shine, we're all yeah. there. You look at it. We're only halfway through the season. Um, still plenty of points up for grabs, and we need to go on a run. We all know that. We're aware of that. A um, few wins puts us back up there and see how we go. Mm, that's pretty much the scenario at the moment. I'm pretty sure we're literally uh, six points behind FC at the moment with two games in hand. So if yeah. we get that, you know, in the derby, man, like, you know, it's all back into it. I feel like we just need to get that momentum happening now and, you know, start getting those wins on the pitch. And, you know, anything happened, like Banana said, man, this um, competition is – you know, there for the grabbing, man. There's not that many teams in the comp, so you jag a few wins, you're straight back in order. Yeah, 100%. Like, you grab a few. Even You look at last year, City, for example. I don't think they won five games in, like, 10 rounds. Or, like, they, they struggled the first core third of the season, and then they end up going on and winning it. So stuff like that can happen. I'm not saying we're going to go win it, but a bit of a run can change everything. And a bit of a run puts us in finals. Um, and... I think the way we're playing, if we can put a 90 minutes together, um, I honestly believe we can beat anyone. Mm. Well, you did it. You said this. Proved us wrong there. Let's hopefully you can put another performance in like that again. Yeah, 100%. Stephen, just because you took, spoke about training today and how everyone's focused and switched on. Now, does the does the focus in this week's session, what, is it, does it, what does it evolve around? Do you work on past mistakes, let's say, against you know Western United or... Do you, do you shift your sessions to focus on FC? Is there a lot of uh, footage, video sessions? What does uh, what does this week involve? Just give us a run through your week. Um, so 
it's this is actually the first full week we've had back at training where we're not having a midweek game. So it's, we've had a bit more time to so first session back in we review um, previous game, go through what went wrong, what we can do better, and then um, once that's done, the next day we go into to Sydney. So we start videos. First day in, we usually watch a video on us with the ball where we can hurt them. Uh, we work on us. And then today we, we work on defensive shape. Um, and then tomorrow, a bit of set pieces. And then, in, like, enjoy it. And then into the games. So you, we sort of do a review start of the week. Um, then we work on us. Then we work on them one day. And then that's how it usually works. Um, even when I was at Newcastle sort of thing, you, you have that first day back review, um, work on the ball without the ball and then set pieces sort of thing. So you sort of have those three sessions where you can work on the key areas um, and you go from there. Are they still playing the inverted wingers, Stephen? Yes, but they have changed personnel a little bit. Gotcha. So last I saw, not on the weekend, but Burgess has been playing a bit of the midfielder as well, um, whether it was that was due to unfit players and stuff like that. But... Um, and Caceres has been playing there at the start of the year. So things can change with personnel, but I think the system does usually stay the same with 4-4-2 inverted wingers. Um, they've been doing it for years with Arnie, um, when, even when he was there. So it's it's a well-known system, but it's about controlling individuals. Do you, do you reckon the league's trying to, like, I remember when FC started playing that system, mate, everyone was struggling, you know? But I think everyone's got gotten onto it now, Stephen. You know, everyone kind of knows what, what they're going to do, how they're going to play. Maybe it's a bit predictable, some can say, but I think this season is probably one of their worst in, in the in the past four or five seasons. Is it mm. a case of everyone now knows what system they're playing and how to how to kind of play against it? Um, yes and no, sort of thing, um, because they, you know, the system they're going to play, but then you got individual players in there that that can flip a game like that, and like you lost Wellington, for example, they play a very similar system to that, but within their system. They've got different personnel. So yeah, it's a system there, but players make systems as well different, if that makes sense. Um, mm-hmm. Like Wellington, that Mexican boy who's completely different to Ninkovich, mm-hmm. for example, or, yeah, or yeah, you've got yeah. a ball who's completely different to LaFondre. Like it's yeah, make um, a big That's difference. How's, um, how's it been like having Rodwell in the squad? Like obviously, you know, he's a big name. Has it been all right with the youngsters or? Yeah, he's good. He's um, I think going how he came over and everything that happened on that Netflix doc or whatever everyone mm. says says about him, it's all. So I, I can personally say firsthand, it's all a bunch of bullshit. Um, I think he was just a situation. There's probably hundreds of players that are doing that at clubs over there, and he just happened to be caught in that situation. Mm. Um, so I think he got done a little bit hard by that, and he's here to play football. It's simple as that. He he just wants to play. He's an unreal player, as you've seen. Um, good, good bloke off the field. Um, very down to earth, you would think. Being over there in, in um, the Prem for so long, you don't know what to expect, but he's just one of the boys. Like He's down to earth, plays football, and just, just wants to play as well. And Like I said, with that that whole thing, I think he got a little bit hard done by, um, but he's just here to play. Is there a relationship outside of football with all your boys? Obviously, he's come across here. You know, he probably didn't have much friends here. Um, is there been like that support system for him outside of the football? I think um, he lives out. I'm not sure where, but he's a lot of us are all over the shop, like yeah. because Sydney being so big. But outside of football, we all try. We want to just have a dinner every now and then with each other, and a lot of boys do hang out. Um, like myself and Johnny, he's here by himself. Um, yeah. I try to him a fair bit. I know it's hard. Um, coming out here by himself and shit like that, being being alone. So everyone's got families and stuff like that. But off the field, yeah, we um we do try to have dinners and stuff every now and then, just to you know, just to see each other outside of the club because you sort of get sick of it in there sometimes every day. Just a different. Yeah. Thing. Mm. Absolutely. Well, you, you, you what's on uh, your relationship with uh, Johnny? Obviously, um, what what's the go? Why did he cut the hair? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. yeah, any kicks, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I think he, he's had it for a while. He's just had enough. So everyone was saying you looked like me, but I was like, oh, thank, thank you me that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not um, that. Okay. <laughs> just for someone, 
Benjamin. Um, overall, like, how are you finding it in the midfield? Like, obviously playing that six role. You know, like I've obviously been following your performances and your work rate in the midfield and whatnot. Like, have you adapted like well to this system? Like, um, you know, personally as a player. Yeah, it's um ever since Mark's Rudd has come in, it's been different system, different kind of midfield. Um, a lot more. I feel like I'm a bit bit higher up the field, which I. I feel I can do um, and like to do. So it's been a bit of a change in that part. Um, but also with games and stuff like that, continuation of games, and it's been tough on a lot of players, but it's been a different kind of, what am I going to say it, like dynamic in the midfield just because um, we've got plenty of quality in there. So it's position for places um, and stuff like that. So... It's been good. It's been a good change. I'm enjoying it. Um, now we just got to, like I said, build on it. It's more about the team performances. Um, a lot of boys say that they just care about the team and stuff like that and don't mean it, but I think a lot of the boys in this, this team do. Um, they really care about how we go as a team and put individual stuff behind them. Who, who, notches, who notches up the most Ks on the tracker? Oh, it'd be close between uh, uh, myself and Keanu. Oh, nice. Keanu. Mm. Nice, nice. He's not a sprinter, yeah. but he, we do cover a fair big, bit of ground. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe he's just running on the spot. Be careful, watch him. <laughs> <laughs> he, he wouldn't have the top speed, though, would he? Uh, nah, definitely not. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right let's, hey, let's flow our predictions then for the game on the weekend. We'll get Stephen involved in this one, too. Um, start off with me. Um... You know what, man? I feel like the boys are going to live for this one, man. Um, You know, it's at home. I I reckon we're going to get the 2-1 win. Mm. How's that? uh, As much as I want to win, I just... Let's use the brain a little bit here. I'll I'll go for a draw, one all. Yeah, I was going to say one all draw, eh? Yeah. You're going one all, Azza? No, one all. I just hope we get the last goal. I don't want them to get the last goal. (laughs) <laughs> I just want you, I want your boys to relax in the in the front third, bro. Relax, enjoy yourselves, bro. When you attack, that's why no, I want to yeah. say to you guys: relax, enjoy it. I feel like you guys get the ball in the middle, like as yourself. You get the ball. No one's making a run for you. I feel like he'd be stranded. You went back at sometimes. You guy get stranded with the ball, and he's always got to get backwards. But tell those guys to loosen up, like you said. Go forward, mate. Force them to go forward, bro. Force them. hundred uh, percent. Oh, look, if Steven wasn't here, I probably would have said a 2 1 loss, bro. But <laughs> seeing as he's come on, <laughs> I'll go 1 all as well, man. Mm. Nah, fair enough. But... Steve, I hope you come on here and surprise us all, bro. You know I'm, I mean? I'm just saying win. I don't care how we do it. <laughs> yeah. We're going to love it. Nice. Uh, I like it. Was the players like, um, I know it's not the Derby or whatever, but the players jeed about this Celtic Rangers Sydney FC thing that was announced? To be fair, we haven't even looked at it. Like, even a few of the boys are talking about it today, about um, because that's during the World Cup. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no way. So, no, not, not many. So what that means with what's going to happen when we're starting next year, but we had a look, and that's mid-World Cup. Um, so what that means, I'm guessing we're breaking over the World Cup. Like, no idea. Um, but, no, it's unreal. Like, that's – that's to get two clubs like that to come out here. Um, yeah. Massive experience, even if it is they are bringing young players or whatever, whoever's not picked for the World Cup squads. But still, it's massive for the fans as well. Like, you could, they're, yeah. they're, they're two clubs that have a big following out here as well. Um, Absolutely. And, but even just to be able to play against Rangers and Celtic, that would be unreal. That's good looking too, mate. I, yeah, I reckon he's, he's played a massive part in bringing them down here to play. Pardon? I'm saying good on Ange for the podium. Yep. 100%. He's probably had a massive hand to play getting those two teams to play down here. 100%. I think they've got a bit of backlash. I don't know if you've seen from the yeah, Celtic. Yeah, I've seen it. But, yeah, like, what can you do? It's it's World Cup break. Gives them a chance to come see the world, play in Australia. Gives a chance mm-hmm. to Ange to come home and, and show the, how un, how good he's doing. Like, because they're, they're playing um some good stuff over there. Yeah. How good is that, but, hey, Steve? Like he, you know, out of Australia, goes to Japan, kills it there, goes over to Scotland. Like before Ange, like as a, you know, I coach, I coach eighteens over at Southo, and you know, as a coach, probably before Ange uh, left Australia, you'd look and say there's probably no 
Australian coaches who really done in, achieved anything overseas, you know. Mm. It's like he's created a pathway now for all coaches who have that ambition, you know. He's given us a bit of a name. So hundred percent. Even since he went, like Musket's now taking his job at, at Yokohama. Yeah. Um, doing the women's game, Angie's doing it. Like that's just going to open up paths. Um, and that if that means paths for for coaches. That means players as well. The young players coming through, they're gonna they're gonna be able to follow these um these coaches over, and it's just gonna strengthen like the Aussie game because we need we need more players in those big leagues overseas. What's your plans after football, Steve? Anything? Oh, I've had a few thoughts. I've still got a while on it. <laughs> Hopefully, um, I do want to come back last few years possible, um, play a bit of MPL because I've never I've never actually played MPL in my career. Yeah. Uh, like in first grades, so I do want to probably finish with a bit of that at Sydney United or, or something like that. Um, but that once I, I'm done with football, I think I'm done. Um, I want to I want to go do something else, whether that's building with my brother or or something in the gym set. I don't know, just something that's completely away from football. Eh? A, well, that it doesn't sound right at football saying that, but some people just need a break from things like that. Like a 20 year career, I want to look back and say, yeah, I gave it my all. Um, and move on to something new in my life, like sort of thing. Like, I don't want to. I, I will still follow football 100% and stuff like that, but coaching that? stuff, not for me. Well, is that um, another, just another quick one? Um, how's how's the skipper doing, man? Is he still involved heavily with the squad, you know, after that injury, obviously, you know? Um, so first few weeks, he, he was quite, he was still in a lot of pain because of the operation he had. It was right under his like his ass cheeks sort of thing. So he couldn't really even sit down or walk. So he was in a lot of pain. So when I saw him a few times or once or twice at his place, he came in. Um, but he's starting to come in now at, like as he gets a bit more movement in his leg. So he's um he's starting to show his face a bit more, which is being a big lift for the boys. And it wouldn't be easy for him um, to be in there every day seeing the boys train. So mm. I think players deal with the injuries differently. Um, Got to respect the way they do it. These big injuries like that and hopefully see him back with us because he's a, he's a big influence. So he's still got his confidence there, like, you know, he's, you know, looking forward, obviously, for, you know, maybe yep. potentially next season. From what I've seen, he is aiming for pre-season next year. Um, yep. And he's, he's that type of character, doesn't want, want to let the boys down first um, and the club sort of thing. So he'll he'll be given 100%. Um, I'm sure he's enjoying his downtime at the moment, um, which is good for him with, to be with the family and stuff. But... Yeah, once he gets back in, he'll be he'll be in and and pushing for next season for sure. Dude, just on that injury, bro, gone just a bit off topic. Before he actually had the injury, I think it was five or ten minutes before that he was cramping up. I think he got a bit of treatment and they gave him a bit of a rub and stretched him up and stuff. Uh, do you reckon when you get those cramps, it's maybe a time you know, maybe sub off or something? Not too yeah, no, some players do. Like I know if you get a calf cramp, you don't really get any of it. It's just it's different. I've never had one in my hammy um, yeah. during a game. I'm saying that now. I'll probably get one on the weekend. But, uh, <laughs> Knock on wood, bro. Yeah, touch on wood. But, no, nah, like, I, from what I've seen, I, I don't think that had anything to do with it because this was just – you see why the way he plants his foot slips and he's yeah. his leg in sort of thing. So, I don't know. It was He didn't really say anything of it at the time. And I, I remember asking when he did get the cramp, like, you good? He said, yeah, yeah good to go. So, yeah, yeah. I, some people are different. Um, I think, I think it was more just the slip of the field giving way and just the weight of it all. I think that just okay. gave way. Yeah, what can you do? It's fucking a shame to see, but is it? Yeah. It happens. 100%. Cool. Uh, boys, you got anything else? No, that's it, man. Steve. Just tease the boys up. The dub. Just tease the boys up. We're there, brother. We're there, cars. We're there. Oh, yeah, we'll, we'll, be there. We'll, we'll be ready for the game. G'd up, ready to go. So. Hey, it's if you score a goal, come over, bro. Straight. <laughs> Even if it's on the other side, just run straight back up. You're I walked out of that, that goal celebration against, uh, against victory with beer all down my head. <laughs> 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 but it was good to see as well. Dinny straight to the fans. So yeah. I think whoever scores, you'll get that this week for sure. Absolutely, man. Anyway, Steve, thanks for coming on, man. It's a pleasure to have you um, on board for this podcast. Really appreciate it, man. Uh, fire the boys up for the weekend. Let's get those three points, man. And, yeah, much love, man. Cheers. Um, cheers. I just appreciate it. Thanks for having me. And, yeah, like I said, we haven't hit the heights that we expected, but 
100, all the boys are given 100% um, and, and are there to the end. So hopefully we get a big game this weekend and off we go. Beautiful. Yeah,